And welcome back. It's the Closers here. Thanks to Nate Smith for joining us here is, uh, to open up the hour. Joining us now from the Missouri Orthopedic Institute is Dr. Richard Ma. Uh, we, we talk a lot of orthopedic once a month, and uh, this time around, uh, he gets the short straw, which means he has to deal with two, the, the two of us. So, uh, we talk, we've, we've been previewing this as hinges. We'll talk hinges in your body today, elbows and knees and, and the other bendy things, but primarily elbows and knees because this time of year you've got kids out playing baseball, you've got adults out there thinking they can play softball, after not stretching or doing anything for a year, and hey, let's go play the family softball. Um, I know we had the other day, um, um, Andrew McCutcheon goes down for the year with a torn ACL, and all he's doing is is trying to avoid a rundown and run back to first, and it's done. He's done for the year. So uh, thanks for joining us. Appreciate the time. Um, been busy or uh, been quiet? You can move that right on up towards you. You can you can move the microphone up towards you if you want. It, it moves. Yeah, um, I think it's always been busy, but it's mm-hmm. always busy for us. So okay. it's good to be busy. Okay. So I'm happy to, uh, uh, to come back and join you guys again. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate the, you taking the time. Um, before we get to the other things, uh, uh, another presentation on Rugby Sevens? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, we just got back from Orlando, actually, and uh, to uh, talk more about Rugby Sevens. Okay, and and it was gender differences, injury rates in, in males versus females on Rugby Sevens. Yes, sir. And I know we had talked about this a little bit, Probably about a year ago, yes, uh, when the initial presentation was done with this, what's what's different with this presentation now than than last time around with just injury rates in females? Well, I think we're realizing that um, the, the majority of the injuries that we see in rugby sevens uh, are related to player to player collision. Mm-hmm. This is a tackling sport, but what we're seeing is that um, with females, um, a lot of them also get injured falling. So they don't fall very well. Um, so we're just parsing out that part uh, mm-hmm. and try to understand how we can maybe better educate uh, the emerging uh, rugby playing population in the U.S. Um, to fall more gracefully uh, when they get tackled. Do they just not know how to fall? They just fall stiff, and that's not a good way to fall. No, it, you get hurt that way. Uh, and that's exactly what we see. So it's uh, practice, you just walk by and just push them? <laughs> I, don't, I think we're, <laughs> gonna, we're gonna have to come up with um, um, some educational uh, videos okay. um, to help um, with those in the, um, these emerging um, females. Because mm-hmm. you know, in our country, girls don't play co- um, collision sports. This is probably the most popular form of collision sports that we have in the United States versus in other countries, the girls may grow up playing rugby. Okay. So they may be um, used to getting taken a hit. Um, so you no, know, these are things that we're, gonna, we're learning as a country and as a um, country that's starting to embrace the sport. Why is rugby seven different than women's ice hockey? Well, um, you know, I know. I guess I didn't think about women's ice hockey. I, that's that's a serious collision sport. Um, kind of. But, um, <laughs> but um, you know, these girls aren't um, in pads for okay, sure. Yeah. Um, and then I think a lot of these uh, individuals didn't grow up playing rugby. Um, mm-hmm. The ones that we see uh, on the field. Whereas okay. I think most people that play women's hockey. Um, I think they pick up that sport as a young young sport, and they they cultivate it, they grow. I think ten years from now, um, the girls that are playing rugby um, are going to be that um, mm-hmm. same um, type of individuals that play women's hockey. Um, but still, uh, as you know, with collision sports, they're they're higher injuries, they're different injuries than non contact sports. Um, but we're hoping um, that our data um, will morph over time as our population um, evolve and get experience playing the sport that we maybe see more distribution of lower extremity injuries instead of the head injuries mm-hmm. and the shoulder yeah. injuries um, that comes probably from poor tackling. Mm-hmm. Um, what's, what's the sneakiest <clears throat> injury that you see a lot of times? Like what's something that, that is an injury, but maybe the athlete isn't feeling it immediately, but, but actually they, they continue to play, and then after the fact, eight, you know, four hours, eight hours, 12 hours later, they're like, oh, now, now we're in real trouble. Yeah, um, that's that's a great question. Um, all the catastrophic injuries that I that I see um, that are um, potentially uh, uh, season threatening mm-hmm. uh, typically they present in a way that they know that there's something happens. It's pretty immediate. Um, I don't see a lot of sneaking injuries um, that end up being something that's um, serious. Um, um, but I guess um, some of the things that people may not recognize that they've had an injury okay. uh, are um, uh, some of the minor ACL sprains. They may have may not be a complete rupture, um, so they don't swell as much. Um, I see a lot of missed ACL injuries uh, in my um, in my clinic, um, where people had a quote unquote knee sprain. Okay. Um, they um, maybe not be able to go for a few weeks, um, but then they go back um, because the knee now has recovered, um, 
and then they have another injury. <laughs> and now the injury is more severe the mm-hmm. second time around than the first time. Right. And I also see this in adults. You know, I've had a high, you know, I had a knee sprain um, when I was, you know, in high school sports. And this knee just has given me trouble for uh, X number of years. And um, I never had to really look at until something more substantial happens. So uh, in that way, um, you know, that type of injury could be kind of sneaky. But usually it does, they know something's wrong. It's whether or not they seek medical attention uh, to have it diagnosed. So it's not so much sneaky as it much as it is we just gonna, we're just going to keep sweeping this under the rug. Yeah, I mean, okay. and, and, you know, as athletes, I got ice and yeah, I'll wrap exactly. it, and you know, I saw this really cool brace that so and so was wearing, so I went and got one at the at at, at the at the drugstore. And... More more K tape, just slather it in K tape, it'll be fine. Well, you know, <laughs> um, no, I think athletes are used to playing through pain, right? Uh, okay, until something really is wrong, mm-hmm. uh, some of the, some of these athletes just keep going. Now, Dr. Richard Ma with us, Missouri Orthopedic Institute. Uh, you mentioned ACLs, and I mentioned in, in the lead-in, Andrew McCutcheon is done for the year with a, with a torn ACL. Non-contact, he was just running back to first base in a rundown, and it popped and it let go. You see this in basketball players, you see it in football players, and a lot of times, if you just watch it, you can go up, hit, ACL, done. For you and your practice, more what's which has more work required? Is it the non-contact ACL tear, or is it the one that's the result of a collision? Yeah, I think um, for me, uh, my professional um, experience with this has been that they're they're pretty similar. I mean, they're both devastating yeah. um, because when they're when it's injured, it's injured. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I I don't know if there's um, really an association between contact versus non-contact in terms of other associated injuries okay. um, in terms of severity of those. Is there a better ACL? prognosis that for a a contact ACL tear as opposed to a non-contact? Um, not that I'm aware of, okay. because I think it's either you tore the ligament or not. Okay. And if you tore it, um, I think they both look the same to me, mm-hmm. uh, because they both mean a substantial time, um, likely uh, away There's from There's a sports. lot of fibers just kind of waving around in the fluid. That's, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't, I don't know if prognostically I could say a non-contact injury is better than a contact injury. So it doesn't change, it won't, doesn't necessarily change how you approach the surgery and then the rehab? No, sir. Okay. Where do you grab the ligament from? Is it a, still a cadaver? No. Or is actually, it a webbing? You have a choice. Okay. Uh, you know, we uh, could take it from you or we can uh, take it from uh, a donated uh, mm-hmm. cadaver um, tendon. Okay. Um, but I think a lot of this uh, depends on uh, who you're treating, how young the individuals are, and what their anticipated activity levels are. Um, I think the more active and the more young you are, the more likely we're going to say your tissue is probably better. Uh, okay. Because the science seems to show that it heals better, mm-hmm. heals faster. Um, versus cadaver tendon, which um, may not be as durable. Okay. Uh, it may take a longer time to heal. And there's probably a bunch of antibodies running around going, that's not mine. Uh, potentially. Okay. Uh, although that's not as big of a problem in the joint mm-hmm. as, say, um, like if you had a liver transplant or okay. kidney transplant. That's kind of different. Okay. It, I th- I'm trying to remember. We had a caller, and it, it was after your last visit when we were talking about ACLs and repairs and such, and he had called up, and he had, he had asked about uh, – any you know newer synthetic type repairs for an ACL tear, and and I think he was talking. He was actually talking. He said, you know, don't forget the rest of us normal people out here. You know, you hop down off a ladder and ACL's gone. Is there as as we move more and more out, like artificial joints and all the rest of that? Are there artificial tendons and ligaments that that can be brought into the fold, and if something's not available? Uh, absolutely. I think um, we've had experience in this, uh, mm-hmm. in orthopedics. Um, we've used synthetic uh, materials, including Gore-Tex. Um, and there's some of it are still actually um, in, uh, in use outside of this country, a lot more mm-hmm. in use outside of this country than it is in this country. Um, and I think that's uh, a holy grail. Uh, if we could come up with a, a ligament that we can make that looks just like yours, that's accepted by your body and that's durable as your own tissue, uh, I think that is the holy grail for this type of um, ligament reconstruction. Um, we're just not there yet. Um, there are people actively looking at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like I mentioned, there's, there's definitely ones that are still in use. Um, in this country, the performance of those um, type of synthetics just haven't been up to par compared to t- biologic tissue. Okay. And so we're still searching for it. Um, we're working at it. Um, hopefully in my lifetime, that'd be great um, if I could have something that's synthetic. Um, I map up your original ACL that's not injured, grow it in the lab, and then I bring it to you on the day of surgery to make what I give you uh, as perfect of a match as I can. Um, nice elaborate presentation. That's right. that's, I could 
That way you feel like it's money well spent. Absolutely. Uh, right out, this a is velvet, fresh. A velvet Petri dish. Uh, Packaging is important. Yeah, well, uh, it, you know, when, when it just means more, it comes in a blue Petri dish. And uh, Tiffany. Be, Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany Blue. Right. Tiffany Ligaments. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> Tiffany ligaments. So that'll be that'll be a great uh, little branch out for them. Uh, indicators, whether it's Tommy <laughs> John or ACL tears. As you, as a physician, when you're sit, standing there on the on the sideline, are there certain indicators that you look at, whether it's how they're throwing or how they land, that you go, oh, we might have a problem with this athlete. Yeah, I think um, there's definitely um, risk factors, meaning mm-hmm. um, mechanics. Um, when you look at certain things, um, that may predict somebody to have an ACL injury. Um, we know that girls um, that have, say, um, a knock knee landing or mm-hmm. dynamic knee valgus, which is a medical term for them, where they shift their knees inward uh, and don't land with a wide base, those individuals um, probably need some prevention. Uh, they need some training so that they can have better landing mechanics to maybe – um, not uh, be at risk for ACL injury. Same thing for people with elbow uh, mm-hmm. injuries. You know, if your shoulder mechanics isn't good, your rotation uh, is lacking. We know that those are predictors for potential elbow issues, even though it's a different joint that's the, the main culprit. So the definite mechanical issues that I think if you're in tune to watching, uh, you can. It's not necessarily predicts injury, mm-hmm. but you're gonna know. You're gonna, you're gonna know to identify that individual as somebody that you may need to work with in the training room. Um, or uh, in doing some additional rehab sessions uh, to hopefully uh, cut their injury risk down. Yeah, I'm, g- I'm going to circle back to something you talked that Jay had mentioned about earlier, and that's the sneaky injury, and then tie it in with with what you observe as a parent of a young athlete. What are some of the things that you can be on the watch for to avoid either the sneaky injury or keep an eye on on your child's mechanics or the way they land? Well, I think um, you know for for parents, uh, there's a couple of things. Um, you know, one, you know, be in tune to um, the age of your athlete mm-hmm. uh, and their development. Um, you know, one of the big talks that was out in Orlando was sports specialization uh, and how a lot of our kids are doing just single sports. Um, I think it's, a, it's healthy to have a mixture of sports. Um, and um, uh, especially for kids that are developing their uh, motor, um, uh, their motor control, mm-hmm. um, that's been proven to not only reduce overuse injuries, um, including potential um, you know, bigger injuries, um, but it's also beneficial for them uh, in terms of their ability to excel in, in sports. Um, and so I think monitoring the type of sports and how often they play a specific sport is important. I think watching how long they play sports and making sure that the body have a chance to recover also helps reduce injuries. Um, and so some of this, um, we, it's hard for us as parents, especially if our kids enjoy sports, mm-hmm. Um, to tell them that they need to um, have healthy doses uh, of these things because we think this is better than playing video games, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but um, there is such thing as, at their age to doing it too much. Um, and so we need to kind of recognize as the parents that sometimes we have to, we have to um, uh, shift their focus to doing okay. something different. Esports is an athletic endeavor there, Jay? I think that the players and coaches in esports treat it like mm-hmm. it is. And I think when you look at something like carpal tunnel and concentration and focus um you know repetitive movements yeah. in the wrist and the and the and the fingers and the, and the, the forearms even <clears throat> um but again in in much the same way that that nascar would be treated as athletes because of a an endurance level hands and 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 endurance you know muscling that that steering wheel a little bit but not necessarily the whole body you're not you're not worried about falls and landings and things like that so I think there is an element of that, mm-hmm. and I think you probably play better if you're in a little better shape, but uh, much like golf, for years and years and years, you had golfers who were out of shape who played well. Yeah, you know? one I mean, was nicknamed <clears throat> the walrus. Yeah, Craig Stadler, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, but then you got you got a whole generation of guys now who every winner can dunk a basketball mm-hmm. on, on, of a golf major, you know? Yeah. Um, and I don't think that's a coincidence. I, I think, you know, when you invest in that, it, it, it changes things. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Richard Ma, Missouri Orthopedic Institute. Uh, okay, so what's the next step uh, all the way back now to the beginning? What's the next step for the Rugby Sevens study? Well, I, th- I think um, we're just trying to grow um, bigger. Okay. Um, you know, up to this point, um, we've been doing it for um, now close to six years. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've been lucky to uh, partner with a lot of different um, organizations across the country. Um, we'd like to in- fold in more organizations um, and also include some of our um, 
um, more elite athletes in terms of uh, the ones that represent like the United States and okay. the Olympics. Um, so we're we're hoping to grow. Um, and we're also hoping to be able to spread the message mm-hmm. um, um, and getting um, organizations like USA Rugby to hopefully um, um, look at our research and then spread it out to its constituents, okay. the people that play the sport, so that hopefully we can make an impact uh, with some with our research and 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 take it out of just uh, being researched by something that's impactful. Um, that can uh, hopefully keep the um, kids that are playing the sport healthy. All right. Dr. Richard Mom, Missouri Orthopedic Institute. Again, you can, you can actually follow him on Twitter if you'd like, especially for the Rugby 7 uh, reports. It's Richard Ma at Richard Ma MD. So uh, that'll keep you up to date on what's going on with the, the Rugby 7s. It's, it's fascinating because um, they even use slideshows on your Twitter feed, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. So, yeah. Thank you much. Appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Yeah, not a problem at all. We'll be right back. We've got more of the closers, and we'll wrap it up right after this. The Closers on News Talk 1240 KLIK and News Talk 1400 KFRU.